This is part three of lecture 11 of ELEC 5300. What I'd like to do in this part is just connect uh, the idea of the Karhunin Loev transformation with the idea of finding a transformation of a finite vector of random variables to uh, a set of uncorrelated uh, random variables. Now, what I'd like to show you really is that the Karhun and Loeb expansion is really ex a generalization of that basic idea um, to apply to a random process, right? So let's take a look at uh, the case of a finite um, dimensional random vector, right? So we have a finite dimensional random vector X that has covariance matrix uh, C sub X. So if we have this covariance matrix C sub X, right, then we can find a set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, in particular if this is a um, n-dimensional, n by n matrix, we can find n eigenvectors uh, and eigenvalues such that for each eigenvector and eigenvalue, we have this eigenvector uh, equation here. Right? And this just says that if I apply the uh, covariance matrix uh, to this vector, then that result of that multiplication doesn't change the direction of the vector. It just scales it. Okay. And so what I can do then is if I have n of these eigenvectors, right, then I can put them all into one uh, big matrix where each column of the matrix is one of the eigenvectors, and I'm going to call that big phi. And I'm going to say, well, suppose that we take x and we apply this linear transformation to it, right? So this is an n by n matrix, and so I'm going to go from n vectors to so n variables here to n variables here, what are the properties of <clears throat> these n random variables here, y? Right. Well, we know because it's a linear transformation then that uh, <coughs> of the x's, then I can get the covariance matrix of y simply by uh, taking the covariance matrix of x and pre and post multiplying uh, by phi, or phi transpose. Now, <clears throat> in order to show you that the uh, these y's have an interesting property, in particular they're uncorrelated, right? I need to then figure out, well, what does this matrix look like? And if they're uncorrelated, then it should be a diagonal matrix, right? But I know that the um, eigenvectors satisfy this equation here, right, for each k. And so what I can do is I can express this as one kind of big matrix equation, right, just by applying this to each uh, element of that matrix phi. Right. So remember that matrix phi here is uh, the <coughs> vector obtained by multiplying each of one of these vectors, uh, covariance, sorry, eigenvectors, um, in in a uh, listing each one of the covariance, sorry, each, listing each one of the eigenvectors uh, as a column in the matrix. And so now when I apply Cx to this column, Right, then I should get an equation like this. So, so those so it should be lambda one, uh, sorry, uh, phi one uh, times lambda one, right? Which I get by doing by post multiplying by this diagonal matrix, right? So when I take uh, this thing times this, then I'm just going to multiply lambda one times this, right? Lambda two times the second one, and all the way down to lambda n times this one, right? So each column of this is going to be cx times this one of these guys, uh, and each column of this product is just going to be lambda k times phi sub k. Right? So this is just a compact way, then, if I look at this thing here, is this just the summary. It's just a compact way of expressing all of those conditions right, in one matrix. Now, uh, this phi matrix here has a special property. Right? It turns out that uh, because this is a positive semi-definite uh, matrix, right, then all of these phi's uh, are, this phi matrix is orthonormal. Right? So that means that if I take um, phi and multiply it by its own transpose, I'll get the identity matrix. Um, and so then that means that phi transpose is equal to the inverse of phi. So then what I can do is I can say, well, okay, Cy here is equal to phi transpose times Cx phi. 
right? If I know Cx phi here is just um, phi times lambda, right? So then I get a um, <coughs> replacing phi transpose by phi inverse, uh, and then this thing here. by phi times lambda, then I get phi inverse times phi here, which is just the identity matrix. I just said lambda, and lambda is exactly this matrix down here. Okay, so now I've proven that the covariance matrix of Y is diagonal, so the elements of Y are uncorrelated, and they have um, variances then that are given by the diagonal elements of this matrix, which are exactly the lambdas. Now what I'd like to be able to do then is just say, well, what is the connection between this uh, and the Carhoun and Lueb transformation? Well, what I can do is I can say, well, <clears throat> I have this equation here that I've just talked about. Right? This is the linear transformation of the uh, x, which gives these uncorrelated random variables. And I'm going to invert this one now, right? So I want to move this phi over to the other side. Right, but I know that because phi transpose is equal to the inverse, if I just multiply on the left by phi and on the right by phi, I'll just isolate the x, right? So multiply on the left and right by phi, I get x is equal to phi times y. And I can just list this out um, as uh, the following. x is just the vector from x, the first component of x, to the nth component of x. And now to kind of draw the connection clearly to the uh, Carhoun and Loeb transformation, what I'll do is I'll call the first component of x, x parenthesis 1, rather than x sub 1. Normally you do x sub 1, x sub 2, but this is just a different way of noting that. Right? And I'm similarly going to take the phi uh, here, and remember each column of this is one eigenvector, uh, and I'm going to denote each component of the eigenvector, the first eigenvector, by uh, the parenthesis here, so phi, uh, phi sub 1 of 1, that's the first component of this eigenvector. Phi sub 2 is the second component of that eigenvector here. And so each column, remember, is one eigenvector, but it has uh, n components in it. And so this is just the phi matrix, and this is just y, and I'm going to use the same subscript notation here. But now if I take this and I say, well, what is the equation, let's say, for the i value of x, let's say like, like x1, for example, right? Well, x1, I just take this column here, I'm sorry, this row here, uh, and multiply it by this, right? So x1 then, or xi, right, is equal to the, uh, this row times this, right? So it's just y1 times phi1, y2 times phi2, y3 times phi3, and so on. So it's just yk times phi k, evaluated i, where i is really just the one here, right? So this i and this i are the same. And I just sum over all possible values of k from 1 to n, right? So this is just an expression for each row of this, or this row times this column. Now, if I look at this equation here, and I just do the simple uh, transformation where I look at this i, and I replace it by t, and I take this n here, and I replace it by infinity, I get exactly the same equation here and here. Right. And so that's the relationship between the Carhoun and Lueb uh, expansion then. So to make this clear, um, what we can see is that, well, these phi sub k's here, which were the eigenvectors of the um, covariance matrix, right, are really just the same as those basis functions. 
right? And so they satisfy the exact same equation as the basis function, right? So this is really just uh, the expression for uh, the, the eigenvector equation. Here, this is the eigenvector equation. And I'm just going to kind of write it out more explicitly, right? So this is a vector, right? This is the kth vector where these are each one of the components. So this is phi sub k here. There's another phi sub k here, this vector here. Lambda k, remember, is a just a scalar. And this is the covariance matrix here. So I'm going to list out each one of the covariance matrix elements uh, using this parenthesis notation, uh, whereas normally you use the subscript notation, but it's really just a change in the notation to make it more similar to the Carhoun and Lewab transformation. Right? And so now if I want to look at each kind of row of this, I take this one times this column, right? So that's just going to be uh, CX11 times phi1, CX12 times phi sub k2, right? So I'm going to multiply this one. The second component here is going to advance with this index here. So I'm going to take the second component here, advance it with this component here, and just sum from all values from 1 up to n, right? So I sum from 1 to n, right? And when I multiply this times this, I'm just going to get the first element of this, which is this lambda sub k uh, times phi sub k uh, at this first element here, 1, which is the first element in all these guys here. So this first element here should match the first element here. Right? And this should be true for each one of these rows, right? That each one of the rows here is indexed by this guy or this guy, the first one, which was i. So this is going to be true for all i from 1 to n. So I'm going to sum over j here where the j is really the index along this row and this is going to be true for each one of the rows right so j is indexing the column here uh, and this is going to be true for each one of the rows which is indexed by i but now if I just take this and I look at this I say hey wait a second <clears throat> if I just replace i and j by t1 and t2 I get exactly the same equation as I get in the Kahoon and Lueb expansion, right? So now if you take this all into account, then what you can see is that really these basis functions then are just like eigenvectors of the covariance matrix here, right? But they're now eigenfunctions of the covariance function, right? Just by comparing uh, these two things. Right. So the eigenvector is just an n-dimensional vector. The eigenfunction now is this kind of infinite dimensional function running from um, you know, 0 up to time t. Hopefully that kind of clarifies things. So really, in order to find these phi sub k's, uh, you have to solve this kind of equation here, which when you look at this, hopefully you can realize that this is very similar to solving an eigenvector equation uh, in matrix algebra. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's take a look at a one particular example of the Carhoun and Lueb expansion to a case where uh, this actually has a quite complex structure.